Welcome back to today's build. Whether you're just looking for upgrades or have no idea how to build this deck, I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is a much needed update to one of the videos that made this channel. His name is Urza Chief Artificer, and this is the Iron Price. Urza has three abilities, each of which ask us to go wide with artifact creatures. Since Urza generates value over time, we're getting the most out of him when we can play him as early as possible and protect him while he's in play. But there's a bit of a hiccup. In the first iteration of the deck, we noticed that the artifact creatures most played in the deck aren't actually very good at accomplishing all three of these goals. So instead, we used sneaky token synergies and capitalized on the dual typings of our creatures to overwhelm our opponents and annihilate life totals. That deck is a little dated, and still worth watching, but it's a very different story now. We've seen a lot of support since then, and some of our stopgap solutions can be replaced with some insane upgrades. So let's see what's changed about our favorite ethically challenged artists. I'll keep this quick since I really want to focus on what's new about the deck, but clearly I didn't emphasize these guts enough last time. Badim is so, so bad here. If you like the Hexproof, you have so many better options for protecting your artifacts. And if you like the hideously small amount of card draw on her, then you'll love nearly any other card draw spell over this. Even in this update to the deck, we're still running more non-artifact spells than artifact spells but let me show you the cards we're replacing them with. Chrome Host Seed Shark can trigger off of 42 cards in this deck, while Psy and Dig Side Engineer each only trigger on 29 cards. The Smithy saves us a mana making our first known compared to Dig Side, and then makes even more for free with 33 other cards in the deck. It's not nearly close enough to justify those inclusion rates. These cards are so much better one with the machine was really never great here. In the old deck we were playing with tokens and so didn't have a lot of high cost artifacts, but now that we actually have decent artifacts that this could see, one with the machine has just been outclassed in the Doctor Who decks. Princely Urza and Cranio Plating just have the totally wrong ideas. We're trying to go wide with artifact creatures, not make a single creature excessively tall, and while the anthem on Urza isn't bad, because anthems aren't bad, we'll still run a few since we have so many artifact creatures, of course. But the ones I have in mind actually are artifact creatures themselves, cost less mana, and have extra upsides. Urza has to be at the bottom of that pile, and we're throwing him out to make room for these cards instead. Taking a closer look at our board presence, March of Progress looks like a really decent finisher, but I really want to stress that looks like part of the sentence. Don't misunderstand, doubling our artifacts is amazing, but once again we have a case where we just have too many better options now for this to make the cut if those creatures don't have haste. The Overseer and Tempered Steel both do really well when we already have really wide boards, but aren't enough to put us over the top to a finish, and are pretty underwhelming at any other stage of the game. At the very least, we'll upgrade into a finisher that works immediately, an anthem that counts as an artifact creature and filters our deck, and a way to upgrade our weaker artifact creatures into towering construct. So what do our lands look like? First, we're running two artifact lands, but only the indestructible ones. We need fixing and adding to our artifact count. Even at the cost of coming in tapped, is worth it if we're not going overboard. If you have the single color artifact lands, feel free to swap them in for a few basics, but they're really not necessary and can leave you overexposed to mass artifact. What I really like is Spire of Industry and the other pain lands. 
The life loss is minimal since we have a high volume of colorless costs, and the fixing is perfect for the early turns that we need it on. So what's our timeline? The early game, our very best plays are developing our mana, then added cost reduction for Urza. We'll continue with that the next turn if we can, but otherwise we'll spend some time setting up for the future. But at a minimum by turn 4, we should have enough resources to deploy Urza and start churning out constructs. We can keep our opponents out of the way by dismantling their board states with these cards, and explode onto the board with a swarm of artifacts. We'll protect our board with any of these high synergy pieces, and dig through the deck with even better card draw than we had the first time we built the deck. Finally ending in a tidal wave of constructs, each feeding off each other's artifact types, eclipsing the sun and washing away our opponents. This deck is even crazier than it was before. All the new pieces we got from Lost Caverns of Ixalan and Doctor Who really gave this deck the gas it needed. The kind of board state it requires still isn't winning before in turn 6, just because Urza generates value over time, but the inevitability that Urza lends us is a force to be reckoned with. The old deck is still a great lesson in finding ways to work around a lack of support, and if you haven't seen it yet, you should check it out. Just don't judge the audio too harshly. It was one of the channel's first videos, and we've come a long way since then. You can flip through the deck history in Moxfield and see what it looked like when it was first made if you're interested. I don't plan on doing a lot of these kinds of remakes and updates, but this one was worth it. A very special thanks to all my amazing patrons. When I started this channel, I wanted to talk about deck building decisions with my videos, but in practice what ends up happening is that I talk for 30 minutes about all the nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube. Here, patrons can request priority deck techs, access extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck techs that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck, whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be eligible to win is be subscribed to the channel. Consider supporting the channel today. If you like this video, here are some of the decks I'm working on next, so if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!